In the last video, we talked about how with a function and its inverse, x's become y's, y's become x's when you make the swap from a function to its inverse. Okay. We also talked about how domain becomes range, range becomes domain, and a few other things. What we want to take a look at now is this graph. And this is the graph of a cube root function. Now, the cube root is that weird little snake-like guy, like the cactus guy that fell over. Here, I have the cube root shape plus two, so it means it's a vertical shift going up two, so it's going to start right here. And knowing my key points, the cube root of one is one, the cube root of eight is two. Come back over here, cube root of negative one is negative one, and the cube root of negative eight is going to be down here at two. Here is my shape. So it looks something like this. So I've got a function, I already know I have a function. And the question is, is this a one-to-one -one function? Because if it's a one-to-one -one function, we can talk about the inverse. And you can see that this guy is going to pass the horizontal line test. There's no place where, if you're gonna fail the horizontal line test, you're gonna be doing something kind of like this. You've got some kind of curve going down. And this guy is curving, but he never curves back down. He's still getting higher and higher and lower and lower here on the left. When we talked about a function as inverse, again, we're talking about how x becomes y, y becomes x. Look at these key points that we have right here. This is the ordered pair 8, 4. So that means on the inverse, we would have the ordered pair 4, 8. You just swap those guys around. So 4, 8 would be right here. And then we've got this guy, who's the ordered pair 1, 3. Okay, so let's mark that this was 4, 8. 1, 3 is going to correspond to the ordered pair 3, 1. And let's just keep going here. We have the ordered pair 0, 2 for the blue guy, which means for his inverse, we would have the ordered pair 2, 0. So there's that guy. And then we have negative 1, 1. Swap those coordinates around and you would have one, negative one. And finally over here, this is the ordered pair negative eight, zero. So we should have zero, negative eight. Down here, zero, negative eight. Now you can imagine that the inverse shape for a cube root should be the cubing function. We showed at the, in the first video of this unit how those guys are inverses of each other. And so that's the shape that we have right here. If we connect these dots, we end up with a cactus guy. So something that looks like that. Now, what we said in the last video is that there should be symmetry for these guys across the, um, the identity function. And you see that if we turn this sideways like that, yeah, these guys have a matching pattern as we go across there, right? So let's talk about what, what that inverse is. So we've got the graph, right? From the graph, can we come up with the function? Can we come up with his inverse? Notice the notation that I'm using here, f inverse of x. Well, this is a cubing function that has been shifted to the right two units. So a cubing function is something like this. Shifted to the right two units means that this would be a, a minus right there. And so that's what the inverse would look like. But we're gonna run into a problem because we can't always go from a picture, and we can't always trust a picture to identify the actual equation for the function. So there, there's algebra, there are steps for us to follow in order to find the inverse. And that's what we're gonna look at here in, in just a moment. But again, I want to point out some neat things about this. So for your function, for your original f of x, you had an x-intercept that was at negative 8, 0. And you had a y-intercept at 0, 2. And when you compare that to your inverse, 
instead of an x-intercept at negative 8, 0, you have a y-intercept. Swap those coordinates around at 0, negative 8. And instead of a y-intercept, you have an x-intercept. You swap these coordinates around and you have 2, comma, 0. Right? This is what we were saying before. Right? There aren't any other really key uh, things to talk about for these two functions. We don't have asymptotes to get involved, uh, and their domain and ranges are both all real numbers. So it's kind of hard to get extra out of that. But we're going to see more uh, about that here in, in just a moment.